Okay, guys, so here we are for another weekly developer update. Uh, once again, I'm joined by Armenio. Welcome, mate. Pleasure to be here. How's things on your neck of the woods? What have you been up to? A ah, busy week. You know, the, the big thing that happened this week was uh, the EIP 27 update. Um, you know, we talked about that last week on this show that uh, it was finally live. Yep. Uh, we had majority support from the same pools that supported the initial vote that kicked off the development. Uh, that took a little longer than we expected. But at this point, um, I believe it ended up passing somewhere around 92 percent. So the smart contract uh, that's going to handle re-emissions has been locked and uh, that upgrade is activated. So as we uh, approach the block height where that switch is going to uh, shift around our emission schedule, um, you know, it's kind We're of going alive. Yeah, it's, it's kind of going live. It's uh, at this point, no going back. <laughs> yeah, so that block height was uh, 777217. Yep, 777217. Roughly the 21st of June, I believe. It works out to be. Uh, yep. Obviously, then that can fluctuate a little bit with the, the block times. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, I have no idea what's going to happen with the ETH merge. That's, you know, the reality is the complexity of engineering that they're doing is something that you know i'm i can't i can't like criticize what they're trying to do because it actually is incredibly impressive it's just also incredibly complex no, you know it, yeah. for like a layman i would say it's like you're taking a cargo ship <laughs> with billions of dollars of value built on top of it and then as you're cruising through the ocean you're saying okay we're going to re-engineer this into a helicopter <laughs> you know, <laughs> like very well put, <laughs> you know, that's, that's lofty goals, you know, and, and I don't, I don't wish any project, um, you know, that, that they're going to fail or run into issues because I understand the complexity of what they're trying to do. So I, I, I have wished them luck in their transition. Um, you know, when that exactly is going to be, I have no idea. So uh, I know that potentially we could see a lot of hash rate uh, readjusting. And if so, you know, that uh, date may come sooner because, you know, if suddenly we get a spike in, you know, hash rate that's above the difficulty, our block rate is going to speed up. So we'll see. Yeah, it's a huge undertaking that they're, they're trying to achieve, isn't it? Uh, like yeah, you really, said, going from a ship to a helicopter. Yeah, it really is. I mean, messages. And it's not, just, it's not just that engineering complexity. It's also the fact that you have billions uh, built on top of it. You know, that's, it's something I'm sure that they're going to make sure that uh, they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that transition is smooth. And so being that it's not just their network, but all of these other projects on top of their network, I'm sure that, you know, when it comes, they're going to be confident. And if they're not, I hope that they, you know, readjust and slow down and, and make sure that it happens right. Because the reality is, if, if that doesn't go smoothly, that could be a huge negative for our space. You yeah, know, not so, wrong. Yeah, the, it's, the crypto environment as it is isn't it the most positive. So if you chuck something like that in there um, for the entire industry, uh, something ne going negative in regards to to ETH two or the the merge, um, yeah, it could be a pretty detrimental to the entire environment. Yeah, we we definitely saw that recently with Terra. So you know, I personally wish them luck. I hope that uh, everything goes smooth, and you know, whatever they want to create over there, they find success in doing it. Yeah, by all means, and then we can just make this nice little safe haven for uh, uh, for the miners. Yeah, I think uh, that's something that um, you know is kind of up in the air. Uh, what what's going to happen to all of that infrastructure, hash rate miners that have you know invested their time, money, energy, <laughs> uh, tinkering around with their rigs, and plus you have a lot of big scale operations that are also you know kind of facing that same uncertainty. So let's see how the space adapts. Uh, hopefully. Uh, you know, one thing I would certainly like to see is proof of work um, continue. I think there's a lot of value, especially in uh, proof of work that supports general hardware. I think that is going to be something that has legs. It's going to yeah, stick around. Sure. Yep, consumer grade sort of GPUs and everything like that add value to everywhere. So the the barrier to entry is a lot lower. Yeah. 
And then, then, you know, there was a video, I think it was Ergo Prism and uh, Ruben Yap, where Ruben was saying that, you know, potentially the only safe chain is going to be the one with the most hash rate. And then every other one is going to have some, uh, you know, let's say risk of having, you know, their security assumptions broken by miners. Let's see. It's going to be really interesting to watch. I hope that, um, you know, after that uh, kind of drama with Heath, um, miners are a little bit more conscientious. And plus there have been some projects that, you know, have, you know, had 51% and basically said, you know, proof of work is not working for us. So hopefully they work to keep it around. Yeah, exactly. It's in their incentive, isn't it really for the miners to, to distribute hash rate accordingly. And um, heaven forbid someone does decide to correlate their own uh, uh methods i would say to take over another chain um hopefully that doesn't occur yeah but well, that's the hardest thing about being human the reality yeah. is the short-term incentive the long-term incentive how do you balance that over time that's man that's the riddle of life <laughs> <laughs> exactly and hopefully we found that medium with uh, erp27 uh, redistributing yeah. the uh re-emissions yeah i heard uh you had some interesting people on your show that were talking about uh some of our uh, capabilities at Ergo in terms of uh, paying miners. Yeah, so uh, part of our d uh, Dark Cave Mining Show, that's a live stream that goes uh, weekly. We had Rob from GetBlock and then also Jose and Catelier from uh, the Comet team. So what they're planning to do in regards to subpool uh, token distribution is uh, uh, Comet are putting up four and a half billion tokens to be uh, mined alongside ERG. So you can get block rewards paid in ERG, but then also alongside that you get Comet tokens. Um, that's just going to be a number of, or one of a number of uh, sub pools uh, getting set up at the moment. So we've got news on another one, which we can't quite talk about just yet. So that's, yeah, it's exciting to, to really uh, come to fruition. Yeah, who would have thought now we have a mineable you know dog coin <laughs> <laughs> yeah we touched on that as well had a pretty good laugh about it all and yeah, uh, see where it's gone from to where it is now no life it sometimes sneaks up on you i guess yeah <laughs> but then also we spoke about uh token distribution so um you could have a, a project that launches uh fairly so something along the lines of how ergo distributed their tokens um we can potentially do that with uh through get block with their sub pools Oh, that's huge. That's huge. Um, ultimately, I think that multi-asset proof of work mining has a lot of room to develop on on Ergo, and um, I'm excited to see how things play out. You know, I, especially as uh, you know, mining gets kind of more in the forefront. You know, that's a unique tool set that uh, we have. Yeah, we touched on a couple of things. What make it sort of possible on Ergo is, um, yeah, the the lack of gas fees and cheap transactions um, has been sort of uh, been theorized in regards to creating sub pools on other networks, but then um, run into potential problems with gas and things like that. So to make it possible on ERG, it's great to see. It's a it's an interesting thing to think about because, you know, miners do have governance over the fees, right? And yeah. if if they raise the fees too high, they may start to interfere with some of the tools that create value for them. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of trade-offs there. It's, it's going to be really fascinating to watch how that develops over time. Yeah, exactly. The, the fate is in their own hands, really. Yeah. You know, it's, that's uh, one thing I'm really curious to see. You know, I know that uh, the concept of giving miners governance in a proof of work system, <laughs> uh, you know, is is something that a lot of people might even see as reckless because it's like you're giving, you know, I guess some developers, um, you know, might see that as kind of like giving the keys to the car to someone else. But ultimately, I do think that the supply side should probably have the ability to adjust based on their costs. Uh, that's what every business in the world does in reality. I, I'm not familiar with too many businesses that don't have some <laughs> mechanism to adjust to cost. Otherwise, they're not going to be in business for very long. Exactly. It's all about profitability and making money. So you have to do what's in, in interest to yourself, but then also your customer as well. 
So you don't want to yeah, alienate. And when, and when you have some, you know, like a uh, group, I guess it's like the OPEC of miners where they have the ability <laughs> to set the oil rate based on, you know, their own profitability or costs or whatever. Be interesting. Let's yeah. see. Watch this space. Yeah. Right. So let's jump into the dev update now. Uh, where are we? So we can kick things off with uh, Lado Pixel. This week is continuing to play with the Telegram bot and uh, doing some experiments with Python. So if you wanted to jump in there, I had a bit of a play with this earlier, actually. Uh, just follow this first link. Um, it'll take you in there. You can just run a couple of commands and away you go. Uh, he's also creating a little Swiss army knife to interact with um, the Ergo blockchain. So. I'm not too sure about this one. I'll have to jump in there and have a look. I tried watching the video, but I can't really make out what's going on there. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just not sure if you had a look at that one. No, I haven't had a look at uh, a couple of these today. Okay, so moving on, we've got Ilya. You want to take Ilya, mate? Sure. Looks like uh, they've been working on the Explorer. Um, I know that there are a couple of Explorer variants that are in development, one of which uh, is coming from Ilya, one of which is coming from uh, Nemo, I believe. Yep. Um, that's a pretty big uh, upgrade for us. Uh, that I would say that when we started this year, um, we probably had two bottlenecks. Uh, the first bottleneck was on the wallet side. Uh, the second was the Explorer dependency. Um, so having, you know, the more development on the Explorer side is definitely going to help with uh, DAP usability and, and kind of the experience under load, especially as that get, gets built out across the ecosystem. Uh, looks like he's added a couple of new toys to uh, Ergodex in terms of, you know, it's fixed swap button calculation, um, adding additional uh, rates so people have a better idea of costs. Uh, looks like he's done a small redesign. Uh, so that's excited and looks like he's moving towards mobile, which, um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people uh, that much prefer the mobile experience over the desktop experience. I'm a desktop guy myself when it comes to crypto. I, I, I do like the mobile, like hard wallet uh, that Mr. Stalfega made. But uh, for the most part, you know, when it gets in a copy paste and <laughs> anything like that, I mean, it's certainly uh, the Ergo Pay thing on the mobile app has made that pretty nice. But I don't know. I, I'm still kind of old fashioned, I guess. Yeah, likewise. I'm definitely on the desktop when it comes to anything crypto, just to uh, dot your I's and cross your T's, make everything sort of yeah, um, the bigger stick and screen helps. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, even now, I still get nervous when you click that set or just about to click that send button. Um, I'll, I don't know, I'll check it two or three times, to make sure a transaction's all, all well and good. So, um, I know others <laughs> go hammer and tong sort of willy nilly and just fire things away, but it's yeah, wild. Um, it still makes me nervous. It's a wild space, man. If you had <laughs> some people will move massive amounts of money just willy nilly, you know? Yeah. That to me is just wild. <laughs> Because you know it's easy when it's when it's like if you had physical cash, you know it's you're gonna have like a certain hesitancy, let's call it. Yeah. You know where you put it, how you protect it. But sometimes with these digital currencies, people don't have that same, I don't know, level of caution. <laughs> yeah, it's not a physical asset sort of in your possession. It's just a number on a screen, and away it goes. Yeah. But yeah, in regards to the Ergo Deck stuff, one thing I'm really looking forward to seeing is the um, price charts up on the decks. I think that'll be a nice little addition. Yeah, I do think that's so certainly something that's going to increase like the oh, just people's ability to watch their trades, try to time the market, you know, and hopefully everybody manage your risk, trade well. When it comes <laughs> to that kind of thing. Most definitely. Now, this one's I'm really excited about is uh, MHS Sam. So. The, in regards to Rosenbridge, on the Cardano side, it's almost completed. So he's got the watches uh, and guard transaction uh, processes sorted. Uh, need a little refactoring, which they're working on. Uh, development of the multi-sig multi on the Ergo side was finished this weekend. 
uh, fixed up an issue with Green Hat. Uh, the Guard uh, P2P network is uh, developed and under test, almost there, and the components of the bridge will be finished in the following day. So that's pretty exciting. That's huge. That's huge. It's, uh, you know, a path to external liquidity. It's, and certainly there's always been a lot of overlap between the Ergo and the Cardano ecosystem. So I think it'll be nice to uh, kind of start that process of, of you know, uh, linking together, seeing who wants to move assets where. I think there are certainly some applications on uh, the Cardano side that have been uh, showing interest in, in supporting ERG, uh, you know, for quite a while. And, and I know that, you know, as DeFi uh, develops on both, um, you know, having liquidity and markets evolving in both places is uh, just a nice path of growth. Yeah. I was thinking about this this morning, actually. Um, and then the utilization of the mixing uh, on ERG, the potential mixing of ERG, so having any token that's come over from a bridge to being able to be mixed. I think that's a massive uh, value add for Ergo, but then also any sort of ecosystem that we do bridges with. Yeah. Well, well you know, the unique thing about uh, mixing on Ergo is it's on chain. It's not a custodial service or, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, you can call them tumblers, mixers, whatever, that they're like a custodial third party service where you actually don't have custody for a bit. So, Potentially, you know, everyone likes to say kind of like not your keys, not your coins. Yep. You know, if you're giving your keys to someone whose specialty is to obfuscate who has what, <laughs> that's, yeah. I can see some hesitancy, you know, versus having it at least transparent on chain uh, via smart contract is, is certainly a bit, uh, I don't know, let's say friendlier on the anxiety side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. non-interactive, uh, permissionless, Yeah, um, all on chain, transparent. And it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful little calculator. I mean, essentially that's uh, what it is. Yeah, definitely. Um, so moving on, we've got uh, his Ergo raffle. So just have to put out a disclaimer here. There's been a lot of scams being put up on the Ergo raffle, which is it's quite sad to see um, people getting taken advantage of. It's kind of rife in the crypto space, I guess. And unfortunately, you create, create a nice little product like this and people do take advantage. So just be quite, uh, cautious where you do allocate your ERG. Yeah, always. Um, so they've got a current plan to bridge uh, the raffles with Discord and cre uh, create a communication channel. Um, so then some community members will have voting powers on the Discord server that they can uh, flag potential scams and things as such, uh, upvote that's, and downvote uh, raffles. That's really needed. You know, and, and the reality is that same tool, uh, if somebody comes on and they have a legitimate raffle, which, you know, knock on wood, I hope most do, yep. um, that could actually be a really powerful tool in terms of driving, you know, your, your cause or purpose for signing up for that. Yeah. You know, exactly. I, I think not only on, on like the side where it gives users protection from scam, it also gives users tools to potentially promote, you know, what they're doing, why they're doing it. So that'll be neat to see how that is built out. Yeah, just like anything in the community, we have um, some nice people in there, the community get together and, and uh I'm sure they'll hold each other accountable in that Discord server as well on what does get voted up and, and downvoted and then just marked as a scam. Yeah, it's important. You know, the, the barrier of trust or like the burden of trust, let's call it, should always be on the project. And, yep. you know, hopefully communities uh, start to demand that that uh, burden of trust be met because that's ultimately important, uh, you know, to as users collectively, you have a huge amount of power in terms of what you allow into your ecosystem. You know, I, I think that FUD or, you know, what are they? Yeah, FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, you know, it can certainly be used in a weapon and it often is in like social media channels. But on the flip side, you know, it can be a shield. So, uh, you know, if the community uh, 
sees things that really, you know, come across as sketchy and, and the barrier of trust is not met. You know, I have no idea if people kind of go in, ask real questions, um, try to get information whenever, you know, I see uh, projects that, that really don't allow that. They don't allow questioning. They don't allow, um, I don't know, let's say critical thinking or challenging narratives or, you know, uh, recognizing weaknesses. Eh, I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then for the most part, the le legitimate, legitimate projects will be happy to answer and, and provide all those details as well. And you can see uh, in the space when someone isn't acting in the the best of interests of others, then they do get quite defensive really quickly as well. But then also you just continue to have to be cautious on both sides. Yeah, it's probably just a marketing thing in many <laughs> cases, you know? Yeah. Okay, so moving on, we've got Ilya from uh, Sigma Valley. Sigma Valley. Yeah, it looks like they're adding a renting contract. Uh, so yeah. within... Um, Sigma Valley, you can now be a landlord. <laughs> so now, I, I, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. I haven't, uh, looked into it into great detail in terms of like timing or, you know, is it like a timed rental per block that they lock it in the smart contract or, uh, what, but I don't know. hope nobody gets evicted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you evict people? You can't do that in real life. Can you? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> blocks up you're out <laughs> i don't know we'll see i haven't i haven't taken a spin in sigma valley in, in a bit i've been a bit busy but we'll have to hop in there and check it out yeah sounds great so then also jumped into the transaction visualization tool to um see what transactions been submitted to the contract uh, added a blog or tutorial site as well for Dapstep. So is that Dapstep? That's the one he's working on in regards to uh, the hackathon. Is that correct? He had that pin lock I contract. So. I believe so. I haven't actually had a, a chance to review all of the hackathon updates. Uh, they came in uh, last Friday, I think, and I've looked through a couple of them, but that's not one I've got to yet. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm excited to see where things turn out. We got what? Uh, uh, about a week uh yeah probably by the time this video goes live then uh we'll have the finalization on the 30th of may uh, yeah 30th yeah uh so uh, in regards to that one as well he's um currently uh, filling with how to speci specifically for the development of ergo dApps with JavaScript and Node.js. I was also working on a high level JS library for uh, creating transactions to be with used within uh, DAPstep. Researching an option to implement uh, ergoscript.js. And the idea here is to have uh, the ergoscript syntax inside JS. Uh, it's based on the project, so a Babel plugin. Uh, so de devs can debug uh, the ergoscript. Uh, in sort of real time, so something similar to how uh, TypeScript works. I jumped onto Twitter and I had a look at that actually, and it looks pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. One of these days, you should have him on your space. Uh, give everybody the virtual tour. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a plan. I'll have to reach out to him. Yeah, what he's working on, that'd be neat. So on to Kushti. Yeah, so uh, we had... A new uh, reference client come out, uh, 4.0. It's weekly. Point. Yeah, it's weekly at this point, 4.0.30. We probably have, I don't know, he's probably got four or five pretty much in the barrel. Basically, what he tries to do is uh, keep the uh, reference client updates pretty light, uh, add about three um, changes. That way it's small. We can test everything before it, it goes out. But he's been doing it at a pretty rapid clip. I think that we'll probably see that until about 4.0.35, maybe. That's going to be my guess, but uh, let's see how new PR stack up. Um, it also looks like we're going to uh, be starting the discussion about 5.0 pretty soon uh, because EIP 27 has been locked. 
Um, then it looks like, yeah, 92.68% hash rate support. So that's super majority. Um, Slee, what else? Uh, looks like he's also been working on Dexy. I know he's been uh, writing a formal paper and on the side, he's also been working on a um, paper that he's been, we, we've kind of been talking about for actually quite some time, maybe about six months. That's just uh, kind of a general reference to assumptions that people need to make uh, because ultimately everything in this industry in terms of you know security assumptions, trust assumptions uh, is not something that is, it doesn't get the respect or attention that it really needs because that's the entire point of uh, these technologies. So. Yeah, we kind of touched on that a little bit earlier as well about how people just send things out willy-nilly, uh, non-custodial mixing, um, scams. You just have to kind of question everything. So like you said, really, that, you really have assumptions. To, you really have to be responsible about that. The big part of self-custody is to understand the assumptions that are involved with that custody. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's critical in this space. Yep, you're responsible ultimately for anything that happens on your end yourself. So the more that we can educate people on that, the better. Yeah, that's that's a part of why, uh, you know, the two tutorials and you know that type of thing is so critical. <laughs> but then we'll still get others who just <laughs> fly headfirst into the wall and yeah, yeah, no looking back, but yeah, we'll get that everywhere. We just have Glasgow here reaching out for uh, participants from the Hackfest to provide updates. And then uh, Green Hat has finished a bootstrap command implementation for the Ergo uh, Oracle Pools v2. It has a couple of uh, PRs there. Uh, so yeah, it's basically straight into Oracle Pools. Yep. Busy man in that one. Yep, that, was, uh, that was basically going to be uh, his focus in terms of building, you know, this is like the DeFi Ergo hack. And, you know, Oracle data, in, in my opinion, is, is really one of the potential Achilles heels of DeFi. Uh, because uh, for the majority of the time, we're still talking about point to point uh, data where you have a single actor pulling from a single source. And what's the Trump, the, the trust assumption there basically becomes like Boolean, true or false. Yeah. So it'll work yeah. when it works. And then when it doesn't work, we have a problem. <laughs> You're up the creek. Yeah. And, and, and so ideally, if we can, you know, create distributed trust assumptions, uh, you know, you move from yes or no, pass or fail to uh, more of a system where if you do have a bad actor, it can offset the price but you don't have kind of the full effect or breakdown and plus you know in that framework there's some game theory uh to punish actors that you know post things that uh shouldn't be posted so it's it's actually uh in my opinion something that the space really needs to mature on the point to point yes or no uh you do, i don't think it makes a ton of sense to build too much value on that personally but you know users decide yeah exactly and unfortunately or fortunately at this stage there is uh billions of dollars locked up in in DeFi at this stage reliant on these sort of single point to point uh data points but then also we haven't really seen too much manipulation in that front as well because obviously people's reputation are at on the line but hopefully uh the the uh, structures themselves aren't compromised and then ultimately having a big downfall in regards to DeFi. So if we can have uh, economic disincentives for bad actors and things like that, then um, yeah, it's great for everyone. You know, in my opinion, it's just one of those things where if we do see multi-chain adoption of that one point to point, it creates more of an incentive for an attack as more value is built on top of it. So... I don't know. It's it's something that as that has grown, it's kind of been like a... It's a really little scary. Need, 
yeah, we really need better assumptions here because, you know, one thing, if, if you have, you know, one Oracle point that's being pulled on multiple networks and potentially supporting, you know, millions of millions of dollars, uh, you know, that one choke point starts to just become something that, you know, the assumption of yes or no probably isn't enough, I think. Yeah, the scary part for me is uh, from the, the trusted actor from providing that sort of data feed into the Oracle itself, uh, what's their sort of uh, intentions in regards to anything could be huge economic in- incentives by people paying off to, to manipulate data and things? Yeah, well, ideally, you know, these systems become more and more trustless in, yeah. in terms of distributed assumptions. It's kind of like the base layer of the network itself. You know, we need to take that same, the hyper focus on security assumptions and then put it into what we build on top of these systems. Yep, yeah, by all means. So one thing that I'm also looking forward to is the oracles getting built out. So having more data points on ERG, um, it'd be good to see people jumping headfirst into that. Yeah, I think that once that data feed gets open, then it just becomes a matter of creativity because there's a ton of data. You know, finding APIs to pull from these days are is not that hard. You know, the, the internet is pretty well built out and you usually have redundancy across multiple things. So, you know, world's your oyster here. Have fun. Yeah, for sure. And as more things get built out on Ergo and other chains, that uh, provides more uh, utility for our Oracle pools. So it looks like we have Dimitri. Uh, looks like Sigmaverse has got a facelift again. Uh, new landing browse all projects page. Um, looks like he's added an add your DAP page for new uh, people to submit their build. Uh, looks like they're working on a mobile implementation for that as well. And uh, this week they're going to deploy the new landing pages uh, on the website that did recently get a facelift as well. Uh, They've still been cleaning up some things, adding a new section for media about us. Um, I think that's just going to have continued support as uh, things develop. Every once in a while, new ideas will pop up. Old things will need to be uh, ironed out. So it's going to keep Dimitri busy across that. (laughs) And uh, on the panel, um, it looks like he's prepared and reviewed a new version uh, for the node. Yeah, just on that media about us, um, that's a nice little addition to the website, I think. So obviously we have our uh, blog posts that get put up uh, once or twice weekly. So be able to have a nice little section in there where you have uh, external media coverage. Uh, it be good to have it all in one little spot. So moving on, we've got Morphic. He looks like he's uh, finished some Sigma code base cleanup for 4.0 point xx uh, for the all the time costing so he's removed about 20,000 lines of code so far been busy uh, so then moving on to 5.0 a release candidate uh, 5.0.1 is finished started work on sigma cross compilation with sigma 2.13 uh, also allow the use of sigma and app kit from scala 3 now it'll be big. And then just has a heap of PRs for 5.0. PRs always. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, now that EIP 27 is locked, uh, our next discussion needs to be 5.0. Um, I really would not understand why anyone would not support the upgrade. You get a faster script engine. Uh, miners get better cost estimates for block space. So... You fit more transactions in blocks, which means they get paid more. The users get a better user experience. You know, it seems uh, hard it's a to not across want. the board. Yeah, it seems like it's hard not to see that as a win. But you know, it, it, miners have governance, so we we got to kick it to the miners and explain this is why this matters. And uh, I I think that'll be an easy uh, upgrade. Yeah. An easy sell for sure. 
Uh, moving on, he's uh, reviewed the reference client that just uh, got released, 4.0.30. Uh, performed a security audit for Mr. Starfelger's wallet app, 1.10.2.1, 1. and then <laughs> moving up, he's got uh, Sigma dependencies, so cross-compilation, uh, Scala, 2.13. Been a busy boy. <laughs> yeah, he always is. So here's a new one. We've got Ergro. <laughs> There's a nice Ergo. little comment in here that made me giggle when I was reading it earlier. So hoping to push out some actual code for the V1 website. Um, so the project infrastructure is deployed. So the Ergo node backend uh, has a app queue and database backend set up. Web front ends currently static, statistic, statically hosted. Sorry. Uh, so it's got uh, nine. Test English uh, P root seed sprout one one in the ground. Images have been taken. Uh, also has some radish, radishes, and then three super secret, uh, definitely not cannabis <laughs> images. <laughs> so um, I've seen a little sort of one or two posts on Twitter. I think it was in regards to Ergro. So I'll have to dive into this one. It looks seems interesting. Yeah. Have to find out what that secret herb is. The secret herb. <laughs> yeah, you know, personally, on, on my side, I live in a cold climate, so I've, I've always, um, you know, kind of been playing around with mining in winter and then starting plants indoors early. So I get the whole herb grow concept. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how it all comes to fruition. Uh, curbside profit. This is a big one, I think. Yeah. Huge ad for the ecosystem. So do you want to take this one, Azarus? Sure. Uh, essentially, they are working on a uh, application that is going to pull data from multiple UTXO blockchains and uh, kind of give users the experience where they can uh, compile, compare data. Uh, we have actually these these tools in, in other ecosystems. I, I think uh, Glassnode is one of them on ETH and... Uh, there's a couple of other uh, tracking tools out there that just give users information. And the, and the more information you have to empower yourself with, the better. And so, you know, for traders, for investors, for uh, people that just want to watch and learn how things respond to price and, and changes, it's, it's going to be huge. Yeah, track the entire history of um, project utilization, but then also pretty much any statistic you can think of, uh, they can visualize that data on graphs and things. Yeah, and then, you know, especially when you get into UTXO, it, it can look messy. You <laughs> know, in, in terms of like the actual Merkle tree itself, it's actually very, very beautiful data structure. But, uh, you know, when, when you're kind of sorting through it, it, <laughs> it gets muddy. So having that visual tooling uh, really is huge. Yeah, even just on the Explorer itself, seeing someone look at a UTXO transaction and having the inputs and outputs and trying to, you can see the cogs ticking over in people's minds when they're trying to decipher what's the input and what's the output and what are they getting and, and uh, providing in return. So moving on, we've got uh, Captain Nemo and Nautilus. So they've released uh, 0.4.0. .0. It's out for uh, better uh, with Ledger support. Uh, DAP connector dot disconnect method has been added and UI improvements have been added in regards to Ledger. And then into the Ergo hack uh, uh, proposals, they've got the GraphQL for Ergo um, Explorer. So they're doing a fair bit of work on that one. Yeah, I actually, I actually got off a meeting today. It's kind of a funny coincidence. <laughs> uh, so if you look at uh, Uroi Wallet, which I, I know a lot of people have been frustrated with, uh, they've actually reshifted around their team uh, recently. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty uh, excited to see improvements on their side. Um, so I, I do think we're going to get some usability uh, improvements, you know, both on Cardano and on Ergo. 
uh, with the new team. And I do know that on the Cardano side, um, their longer term roadmap is to build on top of Cardano GraphQL. And so here we are with uh, Ergo GraphQL uh, developing. And I know that their management has always wanted to have um, kind of parallel development with uh, Cardano and Ergo. So uh, Nemo here might actually be building an uh, open source tool that you know, his uh, competitors can actually take and improve their product, which I think he'd probably be happy about you know, from, from my discussions with him. But uh, I've seen all the posts on, on Twitter and the emphasis that they or he they put on uh, open source technologies, then yeah, I dare say I'd be stoked for that. Yeah, it's, it makes users experience better and, and protects them. And ultimately, that is like the fundamental pillar of open source development is, you know, it is true you can try to have market advantage by hiding everything, but you're also potentially hiding your mistakes. And when you build open source, you have community review and you also have the ability to pass on whatever you do to the next person that can take it, improve it, build on it. And it really creates this unique atmosphere of innovation. Yeah, it's all about empowerment. That's how I see it. So moving on, we've got Scala Hub. Also been working on the Oracle Pool uh, 2.0 contracts. Uh, keeping reward tokens in pool boxes, as suggested by Green Hat earlier. And then also reviewed the ERP27 uh, emission fork contracts and didn't find any issues, thankfully. Yeah, apart from a typo in the description. Oh, There's always <laughs> I'm that sure one we can let thing, that one man. slide. <laughs> <laughs> it's always that one little thing that'll get you. That's good that, you know, one thing I love about open source on Argo is if you look at something like Oracle Pool 2, everybody is passing through it, you know, and, and that uh, really uh, just level of assurance, you know, I make sure that if I didn't miss it, get your eyes on it. Make sure, you know, there isn't something that I missed when I checked my homework and then you give it to someone else. And, you know, that, that puts in uh, just community review is a powerful thing. And, and one thing I like not only about uh the core tooling, but even in the Ergo hack events, when we have that community review, we, we have a better assurance and better assumptions that what is being built is solid. Yeah, we touched on that a little bit earlier, just in regards to open source uh, code. Um, you do provide the ability to people for people to, like as you said, uh, check your homework. Yeah. Mr. Starfelger. Sorry for the delay. Still working on the wallet plugin for dApps. Uh, in addition to the documentation describing the core concept, the implementation is now far enough that it can be checked out by developers. That's pretty sweet. What else yep. does he got cooking in his little kitchen? Uh, <laughs> it's got a desktop demo that uh, demonstrates the UI layer that will be uh, integrated into the wallet app. It'll be interesting. Uh, so yeah, it looks like he's building some demos. That's pretty sweet. I'm gonna have to get in and, and look at that more. The good thing about Mr. Starfelger, Starfelger, I keep messing that up, and I'll probably continue right. for a little while now. Um, his documentation and then uh, descriptions around his what he's building is uh, sort of second to none. I'd I'd say. Yeah. Big emphasis on it. So moving on, we have Jay the Ergod, who are with the Night Owl weekly update. So they have uh, progressed on the roulette UI. Uh, had some help with uh, from Noah in regards to uh, animation sounds, and created a mock-up about page on the back end. They've completed the uh, random number generator service for the roulette front end. Roulette front, uh, transactions and now being proxied to the Ergo Owls Erg node. Uh, Research the handshake protocol, built a program that computes uh, modular square routes for VDF. I'm not too sure what VDF is. 
and uh, released Ergo Hat Goals paper. So it's a pretty nice little sort of um, build what they're sort of creating here with the casino. Not only yeah, sort of are they trying to get everything sort of transparent and then people can be both the player and the house, but then also there's a big emphasis, I think, on the front end of side of, as well. So the user I'm waiting experience. for opening night. <laughs> you know, exactly. I'll be honest. I'm waiting for opening night. Now, you know, one thing I really like about these uh, characters on this team is they actually have explored the idea of having other developers come in and build other games, which, you know, I, I think is really fascinating because then it kind of gets uh, it, it kind of the external uh, community involved and in saying, okay, well, if you don't like r roulette and you don't like coin flip, what do you like? How do you build it? If yeah, there's exactly. uh, incentive and if it's interesting enough, um, you know, it, it certainly might uh, do well. I'm curious to see how Night Owl progresses. Opening night, I'll be there. I'll, I'll try it out. The question I have is, do you get free drinks if you play? Well, if you're at your house. <laughs> <laughs> it can be costly. Yeah. Uh, so not much uh, from a non-BR this week. They're communicating with Hiroi and the Tesseract teams, uh, as well as the rest of the uh, wallet developers as usual. Mm -hmm. and then added a guide on how to sideload the Ledger app for Windows. Yeah, he's going to be busy with Uroy. Um, having that new team, new new game plan, uh, you know, in terms of that entire build is going to get basically get a refresh. I'm, I'm, I have got, uh, let's say, high hopes in terms of seeing their game plan, seeing the devs that are involved and, and knowing that they have uh, kind of their roadmap in front of them. So he's yeah. going to be busy. In my personal opinion, it's a little sad to see the state of where Euro went to. So it'd be good to see everything sort of being built back up and and create that user base again. No, I think I think they're uh, I think they have a good plan. To be honest, I, I I wouldn't be someone that would just say, oh, you know, they're going to do great if I didn't think so. <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually do think they're on the right track, which is great. I think refresh, rebrand, um, and and you know the reality is they still are a popular wallet, um, probably not with power users, you know, uh, but with people that just wanted to self custody outside of an exchange and stake somewhere, I'm sure there are still a ton of Euro users, um, you know, and even on the Ergo side, we have people that, you know, will buy something, hold it for a long time and just live life. <laughs> so, uh, you know, hopefully when they uh, come back into the ecosystem and, and check out the new build, it's, it's a lot more performant hopefully within four years as well so they don't get hit with uh, storage yeah rate. yeah we'll see how that goes <laughs> so moving on we've got liquid phase and swamp audio so has the front end polished now uh got a fair bit going on on the website side of things uh got dos protection uh set up a buy with ergo button very nice uh, Set up Ergo Pay. Quite a bit going on there. I jumped onto their website actually, and for me, what appeals to me in a website, I just love simplicity, uh, and their website really appeals to me in that respect. Yeah, I'm always curious how the community is going to play together. You know, if we start getting uh, the audio musician uh, community, how long until Sigma Valley has like a radio station or something? You know. <laughs> Let's see. Well, maybe they set up a concert hall or a stage or something like that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's just a lot of creative overlap and potential that that starts to come about as you have unique ecosystem projects pop up. And I kind of like to watch that organic growth. <laughs> it's hard to say. It's hard to predict. <laughs> yeah, we don't want band wars. <laughs> yeah, who knows? You know. Yeah. Uh, so moving on, we've got Ali PD double L. Sure, looks like uh, he's upgrading Wasm uh, in Safe Wallet, then fixed a bug on the DAP connector, uh, and is working with Night Owl team uh, for their project. Next, he's going to work with the Ergodex team for official support. That's great. 
uh, you know, Haley PDL has the sleeper wallet, in my opinion. Uh, I've always been a fan of, of how he compiled that, or I guess she, I mean, maybe Haley's a woman. I, I just put my foot <laughs> in my mouth, but moving on, <laughs> I, I think the uh, safe wallet build itself has always been really impressive because it's always had more of like a developer focus in mind. Having the uh, mix integration, that's a huge one. Yeah. Uh, just on um, the Night Owl things as well, they have the uh, uh, React package for the DAP connector. I think that's a, a big addition for the uh, community. Yeah, it is. So just a couple of simple lines of code and you've got the DAP connector set up for yourself. Uh, moving on, we've got uh, low key nerd. So it doesn't have too much going on this week, but then just asking for uh, some help on testing. I uh, just wanting to stress test the Firebase uh, author for user profile functionality. So if you want to jump on there and stress test that, he's got the zip attached. That'd be great. People join. Yep. All right, moving on, we've got noob77777. Did you use your fingers when you counted that? Oh, I almost did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I haven't seen this name, so they must be the new developer with ErgoPad. They're testing the staking contracts for Padilla, They're using the off-chain bots, uh, Da, da, da. New staking front end user experience is being built out. And uh, integration of new staking set up with existing content management system. So that'll allow the ErgoPad admins to bootstrap uh, staking configuration. And uh, finally, just uh, some WebSocket implementation. So it has some couple of links there for the Padilla contracts and some documentation with a demo also. Awesome. Cheese enthusiast. Uh, just a nice little comment there for uh, for the Night Owl team. The React package is cool and very useful. Nice work. Um, then the, his update from GetBlock, they're focusing on the subcooling to, uh, to be released this Friday. It's really exciting. And uh, finishing up some UI additions to integrate with a new a uh, API. Very nice. Yeah. Really interested to see where this sub pooling goes, actually. No, I do too. I, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me that the scaling solution that we see first is on a mining pool. That's not Whoa. something that, yeah, that's not something I would have predicted. That's one thing I love about organic growth is that, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that always you see coming and there's a lot of, you know, it's great surprises in that. Sometimes, you know, there can be some pain in that too, but um, having that organic ecosystem where things are growing in all directions at once is pretty amazing to be a part of. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully we have Cheese Enthusiast on uh, Dark Cave Minus next week so then he can explain uh, Plasma scaling solutions <laughs> for, for our simple minds. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, a non-real... Looks like uh, he's got a new the new version of the node helped get rid of the explorer uh, for the auction house. Uh, there's still some interaction on the back end. Um, new caching server is integrated to uh, cache explorer responses. That's going to be huge in terms of usability, just because sometimes our explorer in the past uh, was getting a little abused. <laughs> the <laughs> UI. Uh, integration is in process, and I I know that that's been leaked a couple of times in the past. It's looking pretty good. I, I would say it's on par with like the upgrade to the Ergo platform website itself. Uh, they have a new UI dev that's uh, joining the team to increase the speed at which they push that out. And it uh, looks like he's going to have some more meetings with the new Ergo team dev to uh, onboard. And uh, they'll provide more updates later. Also, uh, they have some support uh, for several uh, ergo or ergo script developers. Um, so always feel free to hop on and discuss 
uh, issues you run into, questions you have, because open source community really can accelerate your development because you're not just working solo. You have a team of people who are working on the same thing you do. And sometimes when you run into a bottleneck, you hit, in, you hit a dev that said, hey, I've been there. And then, you know, knows the, knows the way forward. So that's always great to see. Yeah, for sure. The new UI looks really good, actually, for the auction house. So nice little update, I think, that one. Yeah, and, you know, when, when you get, we have these uh, solutions coming out in terms of raffle connecting to Discord, it would be interesting to see if that becomes composable to the auction house. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that, that could uh, fix a uh, kind of ongoing community issue we've had for a bit. So I, yeah. I'm curious to see whether that has legs and if it does, where it ends up traveling. Yep, yeah, most definitely. So just from Ilya here, we've got a little update uh, for the pro proof of concept in regards to his uh, little debugger. So once again, I tried to look at this one, but... Um, yeah, I couldn't really make too much out just because of the size of the video. Yeah, Discord's got its strengths, but uh, sometimes that type of media is not it. Yeah, <laughs> especially with text and things like that. Yes, I can make out there's orange text there, but yeah, what it's saying or doing or anything like that, no idea. Uh, and then finally, we have an update from Keith and Ergolend. So they've... Uh, got the ergo pay implemented on their back end. I refactored the code a little. And the coming week, they've got single lender tokens contract to be drafted and uh, help with Sigma dependency migration. And uh, ergo lend has just had their IDO as well. So if you wanted to pick up any of their tokens, you can uh, do so on ergo pad, uh, ergo, ergo Dex. Dex. <laughs> yeah. So that sort of wraps things up for another week. Is there any yeah, final the only, words, mate? Yeah, the only thing that we did not cover um, was uh, Dan released a video today on oh, uh, yes. Twitter and in Telegram about uh, his project Zengate, which is going to uh, try to pursue commercial and enterprise and government level adoption. And he's kind of got a, a suite of different tools that... Uh, He's formulating, building with uh, his own dev team. And so keep your eyes on that. Uh, I do believe he's going to go over an introduction to each particular service or phase. I guess that's like the Cardano style where you have like the eras of people. So Dan's <laughs> going to have his eras of tools. Um, so I'm looking forward to see uh, that information come out and uh it's Happy to track that as it develops. It's a really exciting one, that one actually as well. It's uh, on paper seems really ambitious, but if you want someone who can deliver, I dare say Dan's the man to do that. Yeah, it is. It is an ambitious uh, goal that he set for himself. You know, in terms of the uh, tooling that Ergo can provide, uh, I think that we are certainly growing at a very rapid clip at this point, you know, even compared to, uh, start of the year, somewhat, you know, new, <laughs> new space, new, new chain, new tools, new developers, a lot of growth in that area. And I think we do have some native advantages uh, versus other systems uh, in UTXO. So let's see how that uh, grows. I'm excited. Yep, definitely. And good luck, Dan. All the best with that one. We look forward to uh, following the progress. So once again, thanks again for watching another weekly developer update and take care. Yeah, have a good one. See you guys. Bye.